Hey guys, so I was going through the facts I received so far for next week the other day and one of them really uh, jumped out at me and I just wanted to address this one by itself. Um, I think some things need to be cleared up and let me read the question. It's uh, so the Cherry Lola treatment, how long does it fast? How last, not fast. <laughs> How often are you supposed to do it? Does it act like a texturizer and can it damage your hair? Okay, so I won't lie. Uh, when I read this question or this series of questions, I did give a side eye. Um, just because, and let me explain, I'm not like trying to throw shade or anything like that, but I gave it a side eye because I was kind of just like, <sighs> so we're, we're still on that whole baking soda relaxes your hair kick. Um, I thought we were past that, but apparently not. Uh, it, it did so that yes that did annoy me I have explained on the channel several times that a pH is not enough to relax your hair other things that have a pH of 9 include bentonite clay and you can also buy water that has a pH of 9 uh, it's alkaline water it's available at Whole Foods a lot of health food stores because apparently if you're you know really nutritious they say that um, alkaline water is better for stabilizing your system more than neutralized water so obviously if you could use an alkaline or of nine in order to loosen your curl pattern or relax your hair relaxer companies and texturizer companies would be out of business so let's be real and I just want to say that okay there's a lot of information that floats around a lot of things that go into it but at the end of the day just think about how much sense something makes um, if it doesn't make sense that something with a pH of 9 is going to really yes there are uh, some perms that have like probably like what like a pH of like 11 so it's like closer to 9 but that's not the only thing that's relaxing your hair actually when you relax your hair the main thing that is straightening your hair is the smoothing process that you do when you have a relaxer uh, because when those bonds are broken you have to smooth the hair to be straight in order to reform the bonds in a straight manner but that's that's kind of besides the point but just just saying that's alone that's not enough to relax your hair it's not enough to texturize your hair other things that do not loosen curl pattern include coconut milk coconut cream anything that basically is moisturizing to your hair what the misperception is is that a lot of the time people are not properly moisturizing their hair or moisture is not able to reach their hair properly so when they do a deep treatment with something that is very moisturizing like coconut milk or uh, that has a pH of 9 like baking soda which does slightly lift the cuticle in order for moisture to be readily And so then when the hair becomes moisturized in a way it's not used to or in a way you're not used to seeing, then your hair might appear less frizzy, your curl pattern may look looser because when your hair is dry, I know when my hair is dry, it shrinks a lot more and it is just not, it's, it's not hitting it. Uh, so that's, okay, so that's the first point. Second point, let me answer her question. Uh, how long does it last? It's basically a deep treatment slash protein treatment. I would call it a light protein treatment because the Bragg's amino acids in it aren't really, those are building blocks of protein, but they're not actual protein. Uh, the yogurt in it, yogurt does have protein, but it is also a heavy fat. So it's pretty moisturizing and yogurt does, is acidic as well. So, um, yeah, I would just say it's kind of like a light protein slash deep conditioner so as long as your deep conditioner lasts that's how long a cherry lola treatment would last it's not like something like uh second advice. question uh, how often are you supposed to do it personally i would not do it more than every two weeks um i haven't well before yesterday i kind of did like an impromptu one um I mixed a deep conditioner and I was using some like hibiscus powder and the rest of my butters and bars clay mask in it and 
after I mixed it all up with my DC, I used one of my Enzo DCs, and I tested the pH. Every time I mix something now, or like on its own, I always test the pH before I put it in my hair because I don't know what the hell I just did. And I put like honey in there, and honey is acidic. Um, I, I'm pretty sure hibiscus powder is acidic. And I put aloe vera gel in there, that's acidic. So I was like, let me test the pH of this because if I use something with a it, very acidic pH on my hair, it is, Izzy is very angry. So I, I tested the pH, it was very low, it was like three. So what I did is I just added baking soda to it in order to uh, make the pH higher. I use it as my own pH balancer. Um, but it, it worked out awesome. But before that, I had not done a Cherry Lola treatment uh, before the last time I did that blog post where I jacked my hair up with an in acidic conditioner. So I did it then, but before that, like when my hair was shorter and I did them more, I probably did them once every two weeks. Um, I, I really love them, but I wouldn't do it more than that for the following reasons. No, it's not damaging to your hair because of like the actual baking soda, what the baking soda does to your hair. Um, but at the same time, I don't recommend using it a lot because baking soda is sodium bicarbonate. Sodium does dry your hair out, so you don't want to, you know, keep just using that all the time because your hair can get dry. Second thing, baking soda is very gritty. Uh, so when you add baking soda to your conditioners and things like that, a lot of the time the slip will not be as good. And when you apply things to your hair, and this goes for clay treatments, anything like that as well, um, you kind of want to decrease those gritty textured things on your hair because the more friction that is on your hair strands, the more um, it your hair strands, like the cuticle layer may be damaged. So, you know, you're rubbing your hands together, you, you have all this gritty stuff in your hair. That's all that's all rubbing on your cuticle. Your your ultimate goal is to keep your cuticle smooth. So you don't want those gritty textures constantly on your hair. Which, so yeah, so those are my two points about baking soda. Those are the only reasons why I don't think it's necessarily good to use baking soda all the time. It doesn't have anything to do with the pH of baking soda. Uh, steaming also lifts your cuticle slightly. That is why I haven't been doing cherry lola treatments because I bought a steamer and I've just been steaming my hair instead. Uh, so it's not really about the pH of the ingredient. But I'm just saying it's like, uh, yeah, baking soda, not really that bad for your hair. Uh, I, th I thought we were, I thought we were off that, but I guess not. It's, it's okay though. Um, this is, I mean, and if you don't agree with me, that's fine. This is my opinion. I've done the research. I don't understand how, uh, people can knock baking soda and say, you know, baking soda is so bad for your hair, but then turn around and use bentonite clay and bentonite clay is the exact same pH as baking soda. So I don't know, once again, how the natural hair community baffles me. Uh, moving on though, I feel like, uh, Ba yeah, baking soda really gets a bad rap. Poor baking soda. I don't know. But I will say, I do not recommend doing cherry lola treatments or steaming your hair if your hair is already high porosity. You don't want, if your hair is high porosity, like I mentioned in my porosity video, you do not want to do things that are going to lift your cuticle because your cuticle is either already lifted and or damaged and pieces of the cuticle have been chipped away. So you, you don't want to do that. Um, I recommend things like this for low porosity hair because you need help getting that moisture into your hair. So yeah, I think that pretty much explains it and this is probably a super long answer, but I just wanted to get that out of the way and clear that up and make sure everyone understood at least my stance on using alkalines. I really just think it depends on your hair. Uh, it, it is helpful to some people. It's very beneficial to some people. Some people, I don't recommend doing it. Like I said, if you already have high porosity hair, why would you want to lift your cuticle more? 
it doesn't make sense to me. So I'm just saying like when you're thinking about things to do with your hair, just use a little bit of um, common sense. I know that sounds incredibly bitchy, but it's the truth. I say. Like, so like if they advertise a conditioner and they say this conditioner has a pH of four in order to close your cuticles, smooth your cuticle down. Um, a lot of people are like, yay, pH balance, smoothing my cuticle. I look at things like that and I'm like, uh-uh, I don't want that. Uh-uh. My hair gets really mad when I use acidic things on it. So just, just take a little bit of time to learn your hair and learn what your hair likes because it'll, it'll do you good in the long run. Um, yeah, but that's it. That's all I had to say. So I will talk to you guys later. All right, bye.